to The Earth is Flat. My name is Robert, and this is The Flat Earth Reality. So today, guys, we've got a really special episode. Um, I didn't get a chance to kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, warn you guys, because, you know, normally I like to give you guys a head up, a heads up. Now, I did tell you guys that I was going to try to get this person to um, come onto our show, and um, lo and behold, we got lucky, and we reached out to him, and he was able to, um, very thankful that he was able to come on to our show. So, um, with that being said, where uh, everybody please welcome David Weiss. David, how are you doing today, bud? Doing good, Robert. Nice to be on a show that speaks truth, flat earth reality. I actually just used that line today um, in a comment to a glober, so I like it. Really? <laughs> Yeah. Well, but that's awesome. So, I mean, I'm a new podcast. Your episode will be the 16th episode that we've done. So, I mean, we're fairly new, but, you know, I really got into the podcast world because I was really into Flat Earth and there wasn't many active podcasts going on talking about it. You know what I mean? You know, that's funny. I, I um, was heavily into Flat Earth, you know, all through YouTube and, and uh, elsewhere. And, um, I met Matt Long. I don't know if you know him. Um, he's a big flat earther from the Bible side. And uh, we met at a conference. And and um, actually, I'm telling the story backwards. <laughs> I met another guy who calls himself Curious Jay, who said, there's no podcasts, zero, that talk about flat earth. There's YouTube. There's you know all sorts of video platforms. But there's no podcast. And that's when I started the Flat Earth Podcast. And uh, it became hugely successful and then curious jay had to leave because of some contract stuff he had with his uh his primary work and that's where matt long came on but um that's where i started you know in uh the podcast world and it was uh, a huge hit you can still find all that stuff at my website flatearthdave.com and uh, just go down to the bottom and i think all the podcasts are there they still hold up today even though they're a few years old and aging well that's awesome brother that's very awesome so we're just um, now, obviously, most people probably know who you are, um, but I'm assuming that we still have some new people or getting into my podcast because the way I go about it is I'm trying to like teach people about things. Also, you know, I'm not just assuming everybody joining my podcast is already a flat earth believer. So if you don't mind, just go ahead and give yourself a little introduction for those who may not know who you are. I have the same story that everybody else has, you know, um, Flat Earth was thrown in my face, and I laughed, and I ridiculed, and I pointed, and I made jokes, and I refused to look. And then for some reason, somebody got me to look, and I said, all right, I'm going to just debunk Flat Earth and prove the globe because, you know, it's obvious, right? We live on a spinning water ball flying through an infinitely expanding space vacuum. I mean, it's just obvious. Everybody knows that. Right. And uh, only, only then, only when you try to disprove uh, Flat Earth or prove the globe, um, do you wake up to the flat earth reality? So, um, you know, we all have the same story where we heard about it. We laughed and we looked and we had the ability to take in new information and, um, change our minds based on new information. So that's it for me. And then I, I kind of left my own, um, you know, I was, uh, in the business world. I had my own company and, and, um, I realized that this message is literally the most important message ever. The, this globe lie um, is the, the reason or the, the mechanism that they have used to enslave humanity. Because if you don't know who you are, where you are, what you are, the power that you have, or what this place is at all, um, you have no power. And uh, that's how they keep us slaves. So, um, so here I am. And uh, I do interviews and I talk to as many people as possible and talking to you and your audience. And we are definitely grateful to have you on day for sure. So um, do you remember where you were and uh, what you were doing when you actually realized that the earth was flat? <laughs> well, I, I know exactly where I was when... I don't know if you know the researcher Sophia Smallstorm. She did uh, one of the first movies on 9-11 called 9-11 Mysteries. I encourage anybody to look that up. And uh, she did some other incredible documentaries, one about the, the Beachy School, in case this goes on YouTube. 
um, in Connecticut. And, um, and I was talking to her for while I was driving into my podcast in New York City from Connecticut. And she's a long talker. And we were talking the entire way in and into the studio. And now I'm in the studio and we're setting up for the podcast. And we were talking about some major deceptions that were happening in the world. And, uh, and I said, you know, Sophia, there's so much deception in this world. It's mind blowing. And she goes, Oh, Dave, I think it's worse than that. And I was like, what do you mean? She goes, I think the earth is flat. And meanwhile, while I was talking to her, I was on Facebook banning people for suggesting that I look at flat earth, banning them, oh just banning goodness. them from our podcast, <laughs> blocking them forever. And, and I was just like, not nah, you too, Sophia. And she goes here, watch this. And she sent me a couple of videos and, know that well where did you get your information from youtube well youtube is a is like life it has great stuff and crappy stuff it has everything and you just use your discernment so i watched mark Sargent's clues i watched eric debase 200 proofs and i was like okay that's interesting but there's got to be this can't be true and for two weeks i tried to prove the globe and uh, at the end of that two weeks i was barely any sleep at all i was like whoa and then we all you know when you wake up to this reality, your inner core, your your spirit, your soul rejoices like, yes, finally, finally, I've gotten through to the conscious brain that has been programmed, you know, listening to the tell live vision programming and uh, and and in, in this inner joy you feel, let alone, you know, your conscious mind is like, oh, my God, my entire world is falling apart um, and it's scary. But once you wake up from that and once you get through that, um, you're in a much better position. You know, we're not on a, a speck of dust flying through an infinitely expanding universe where an asteroid could slam into us and a sun could supernova. And, you know, and all of this nonsense, we're running out of resources and we got to go to Mars. And that's a whole nother topic. And uh, you realize that you're at the center of creation and you are protected and there's infinite resources. Um, it changes everything in, in your life. And if you have the mental capacity to deal with that much of a shift in your dogma belief system, uh, it's like, it's life changing. I tell people, you know, when you, uh, when you talk to me, if you're going to take time and listen and you actually use your God given common sense in your brain, it's going to change your life forever. And that's no understatement. Absolutely. I definitely can relate with that 100%. So after you did your research and after you realized, okay, we've been lied to, the earth is flat. Um, how did it affect you and, and uh, how did it affect those closest to you? <laughs> well, that's, uh, you know, when you, know, when you become a flat earther, now it was worse, worse back in 2014 when I had my transition. Um, and because, you know, back there, you mentioned Flat Earth, you just get ridiculed and, and everything. Now, it's like you mentioned Flat Earth, people are like, oh, that's interesting. I heard some stuff, you know, and if they're willing to listen, you can easily wake them up. And because there's a big shift, you know, we're, we're way past that hundredth monkey. And um, you're going to lose people. You're going to lose some people in your life. Some people aren't here to wake up. Some people are here to be what I, you know, what, what we call NPCs. Um, and they're here to for whatever reason, and you can't force somebody to wake up. You can lead a man to knowledge, but you can't make him think. But you can make him drink, but you can't make him think. And um, okay. and and so so it had uh, you know I've lost some friends and I've gained I've gained a whole new family and uh, and you know my brother and sister are not awake at all. Um, I've never ever discussed flat Earth with them at all, not once. And it's, it's interesting. So, you know, you just have to kind of wait and see, but it definitely is a shift in who can deal with it and who can't. Okay. Yeah, I definitely understand that. So like for me, you know, at first when I found out, I was like, wow, you know, this is crazy, but I didn't really care about it. If you, you know what I mean? You know, I was worried about life and work and my job, paying my bills and stuff. And it wasn't until maybe a year after that, that I really, um, I was just, you know, I kind of left it alone, which is kind of crazy. But like I said, it, life was crazy at that time when I uh, got into it, it was uh, 2020. So you know what was going on during that time. So, 
you know, we did have more time. Um, I ran across Mark Sargent, I think, that's probably where most people start. And, um, you know, it wasn't until a year or two later that I actually really decided to just dive into it because I started listening to podcasts. And um, <clears throat> I discovered your uh, Flat Earth, Zodiac, Sun, Moon, and Clock app, which I thought was amazing. And I think it's super amazing that uh, you have, like, the backlisted YouTube videos that you can access only from your um, app, which is pretty pretty um, extraordinary. So uh, if, if we can, I'd like to talk about that. Is there, like, a special algorithm or something? Like, how do you get to these videos that you can't just find searching up on YouTube? Well, it's because I'm so connected to um, so many researchers that we all spread videos around. And, and, you know, like there's probably new flat earth channels out there that are putting up stuff and we don't see it. We, you don't, YouTube won't feed it. But one way you can, if you search flat earth on YouTube, you're going to get flat earth, Dave, flat earth, sunsets, flat earth, proof, flat earth, whatever. If it says flat earth, you get the same videos, the same propaganda videos at the top of your search, okay? And, um, you know, like um, ODD has a, the, one of the famous ones, which is one of the greatest ones to start with. It's called, the, the name of the video is called A Stranger's Guide to Flat Earth, 21 Questions. Pretty unique title. You search that, it doesn't come up. It comes up with propaganda. It comes up with, you know, PSYOP Man Dan and uh, Not a Professor Dave and, and all of the nonsense that they want you to see to scare you away from Flat Earth, to tire you out. So the app, you know, I created the, the video section on the app because of the censorship. And I've compiled all of these videos and, you know, it, you won't find them in searches, but I've got them all linked in the app and then grouped in the sections under frequently asked questions and stuff because, you know, people would email me, Dave, you know, what about the gravity? How do, where does the sun go? And, and I don't have time to do to, to explain it to everybody so i just say just go to the frequently asked questions section and go click where does the sun go and then you'll know what about eclipses click the eclipses section what about boats over the horizon click boats over the horizon okay there's there's all of the questions that you have are there and we're adding more and more all the time so um you know as long as youtube allows those videos to remain on their platform they're going to be accessible, but I have them all backed up on several other platforms. So the day YouTube decides that flat earth is a deception and is disinformation and they wipe everyone's channel, which could come, could come today, could come anytime. Um, within 24 to 48 hours, I'll have them all back. I'm running on a web three server running from different, different places all over the place. So. That's just so that's one, awesome. Yeah, that's one one factor, you know, of the app, which is the ability to access, you know, the videos and images. I have the whole images section, which is uh, really taken off. Um, but the, the one of the biggest features on the app is the friend finder. Have you used it? Have you found any people around you, local people? I, yeah, actually, I wanted to um, talk about that because. Um, so I've had the app for a, a few years and I've never really got into it. I haven't got around to the yearly subscription yet, which I plan to because I want to get more uh, involved locally. So um, actually the other day I just got on there, you know, because I use it a lot for to play audio clips on my podcast because expect, I did a moon episode. Um, my last episode was about the moon and, um, you know, I find the best videos through your app. But anyway, so I got on there one day and I noticed I had a message. But most time when I have a message, it's just like, hey, an app update or something like that. But somebody had actually messaged me who was local and uh, his name was Richard. And he just said, hey, if I did a um, if I did a meetup, would you be interested? And so, of course, I was like, absolutely. So we connected. Uh, How did you we connect with him? A little bit. Uh, well, uh we exchanged phone numbers. And, so, um, so you were messaging with him in the app using the messaging system. Yes. Yes. And then, so after we messaged back and forth for a little while and, you know, I was like, well, Hey, would you be interested in an interview for my podcast? You know, because I don't want to just interview, um, you know, like the big known guys like you, Mark Sargent, Sean Hibbler, but, um, you know, I want to get regular everyday people on here also, which we will have our first listener coming on um, Sunday. So that's very exciting. And um, anyway, so we exchanged numbers and we got to talk in and then I um, 
we kind of didn't we kind of uh, quit talking for about a week and then I was back on the app looking for videos and uh, I noticed I had another message it was from the same guy he said hey uh, meet up at such and such and I was like oh crap I think I missed it because I it was a day before that I was like dang I think I missed it so I sent him a text message I was like hey I noticed you had messaged me in the app I was like did uh, did I miss the meetup he said no it's tonight at seven o'clock I was like oh thank god so I actually went and met this guy, and it was just us two, which is fine. I mean, you got to start somewhere, right? But um, it's it's amazing because it brings people together in a way you wouldn't expect. Okay, so I'm 28, and this guy was 57 years old. Okay, so you know it's it's very diverse the flat Earth community. It's not just you know certain age groups or anything. So it's very cool to bring people together. And me and him, we had a whole conversation for an hour, just nonstop talking and talking. You know, it's just it was nice to sit face to face and talk with somebody that lives in the same area. And that's all thanks to your app. So I did. It doesn't matter. Grateful. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter what age a person is. It, it's, uh, you have so much in common when you understand, um, reality, you know, flat earth reality, uh, the conversations are never uh, lacking. And when you're a flat earther, you're never bored ever. Cause there's always new stuff to learn. And when you have other people around you that are awake and aware, there's never a lack of anything to talk about. So that's a, you know, that's one thing that we all say is uh, you're never bored. You can re remove that word from your vocabulary because your eyes are open to a much bigger expansive world. Yeah. And, um, <clears throat> you know, you can always learn something new from somebody else and that's why it's good for, us to get together and talk about this stuff because you're always, like you said, you're never bored and you're always learning something new. Yeah. It's uh it's, it's fascinating. We did a, I did a broadcast um, message of 50 kilometers around uh, where I am here in Connecticut near New York city. And we had to meet up 75 people showed up and it was amazing. It was crazy. And if you do, you know, if you have a meetup and one person shows up, that's an event meeting one person that's awake and aware that you don't have to stifle what you say and you're able to have actual conversations and discover new things together. Um, that's, that's a happening. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, guys, for those of you definitely check out David Weiss's app. Um, I'll let him do his little thing. Cause I know you always say everybody check it out. So, Tell everybody to check it out, Dave. It's, you can get all my stuff. You can find everything I have at flatearthdave.com, right? The app is $3 per lifetime. You have it forever. And then if you want to do some of the higher functions, which I've added, you know, everybody was happy with the app when it was $3. Wow, this is the greatest thing ever. You should charge more money for it. I'm like, nope, I want everyone to have it. And then I started adding advanced features like the trivia game. And there's a new uh, memory tile game that you're going to be able to play with other people remotely and messaging and video calling and group tech, you know, you can create groups and everything. These things require a subscription and the subscription is only $11 a year. Okay. So people are like, well, $11 a year, but then they go to a bar and they buy around the shots for everybody. And you know, it's $60, $11 a year. <laughs> and if you can't like, for some reason, if you can't do it, like you're on your parents account, you know, phone account or something, or, you know, or whatever, um, you can just refer the app to 11 people. And once you have 11 points, you can trade it in for a year subscription. So, yeah, I definitely recommend everybody to check out his app. Flatearthdave.com. Like Everything is there. Flatearthdave.com. It's the only thing you have to remember. There you go. And I'll definitely have that down in the show description also, guys, so you don't have to worry about writing that down or anything. But um, it's definitely better than trying you can get more information from it and it's got direct questions and not only that he posts videos every day so there's new stuff always coming so it's definitely worth checking out and it's definitely worth the three dollars i uh i tell people you know the globe believers i'm like if you think the earth is a globe take my challenge watch the daily video every day there's a new video at 801 a.m eastern and uh, watch that daily video every day for two weeks. At the end of that two weeks, if you think the earth is a globe, send your proof and you win three Bitcoins. All right. But oh, so, so you're still doing the three Bitcoins. You've been absolutely. Doing that for years. Have well, you had to give any away yet? The earth is not a globe. So, no, I don't have to <laughs> give it away. But the thing is, I've had very few people other than some really brain dead trolls 
that are like, you know, the stars, you can't see Polaris from, from the south, therefore the Earth is a globe. They don't understand how perspective work and how atmospheric density works and the fact that you just can't see Polaris because it's too far away when you're out south. It's Polaris is not 433 light years away. It's very, very, very close. And going out south makes it much farther. And then you can't see it because of perspective. That's all. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. That's, sim- that's uh, sim- the biggest thing is perspective. Yeah. A simple thing. Imagine yourself in a room. Two people are in a room. And it's got 10 foot high ceilings and it's got uh, lights, all random lights in the ceiling. And we look up and like, oh, there's a bull and there's a starfish and there's, um, you know, uh, a sea lion, you know, and you got you. So now you have your patterns in the roof. Now expand that room to 10 miles wide. And and one person goes for a walk and they're walking now 10 foot high ceiling. I don't know if you've ever been to Las Vegas. Um, the hallways are so long there that the lights merge with the floor at the other end just due to perspective. But so say you walk a mile, two miles, three miles away, you can no longer see that person. You can't see, you can't yell because they can't hear you at three miles away because your sound just dissipates. And so you call the person on their cell phone, you say, hey, look up at the lights in the sky. And they say, yeah, look it up. You see that starfish, you see that seahorse, you see that, uh, that whatever the first one was. And uh, the person goes, no, I see completely different stars. And uh, therefore, if you're a globalist, you can conclude that the floor is spherical, which is ridiculous. Mm, uh, yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's without atmospheric density. That's without mountains in the distance that are blocking your view that look like they're at, high, at eye level. People don't understand when they look at a horizon in the distance, that line is thousands of feet above their eye level but it looks like it's at their eye level just look at the clouds when there's a you know if you're on the water um and there's clouds above your head look at the clouds 20 30 miles away they're touching the water those clouds are still 10 20 000 feet in the air however high they are okay um they're touching the water and they look like they're at your eye level okay anything above that that goes farther than those clouds will appear to set behind that line, which I call your horizontal eye zone. Yeah. And it's all just perspective. Yep. And it's actually amazing because they teach us perspective in school. So, I mean, that's one good thing that they teach us, right? Well, did they teach it? They kind of took that out of school. I thought they, 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 they took that. They tried to get rid of art. They tried to get rid of all that stuff. Most well, I'm sure they probably have. School. Yeah. Well, I did learn perspective in school. You know, you all, they always teach you how to draw train tracks, you know, and the lines always converge at the center of the page. You know what I mean? Yep. But, uh, yeah, I, I, um, now I know that uh, school is, is purely indoctrination. And, um, you know, whenever I have kids, they are definitely going to be homeschooled. And, uh, you know, the homeschool is actually – becoming much more popular these days because it's not just, you know, they, the, people are starting to wake up and realize, Hey, this is, it's, it's, it's not good for people. In the school system is run, you know, by the Rockefellers and it's all just to turn you into a good little slave. It's actually child abuse to send your kid to, to school these days, but people don't realize that. But, um, you know, on the app, people are getting together. They're making homeschool groups. There's a new update coming out where the front, where the profile section will um, it's right now it's a very simple profile section, but it'll be a lot like Facebook. You could post pictures and links and information about yourself. You're looking for a job. You ha- you're offering a job, all sorts of stuff. And then um, after that's up and running, we're going to make it so you can put in your work skills and your interests, and then people can search by that. Like, hey, I want to move to Florida. I'll search real estate brokers in Florida, and then I can find flat earth real estate brokers. Or I could say, hey, um, in the 50-kilometer radius around me, um, how many people have children that are they want to homeschool? And then you could start a homeschool group, and you could do all sorts of stuff like that. That's actually um, really awesome, Dave. I'm uh, excited for that update, and I'm definitely going to be um, subscribing to the yearly subscription for sure. Cool. Okay, so um, we're going to keep on moving along. I've got a list of stuff right here. Um, 
so I've seen that uh, some of the videos where you've done some simple experiments at home. Can you give us some examples that we could do at home ourselves and uh, our listeners can do at home ourselves? Because I actually, my last episode, I did a simple experiment and um, I ended up posting it on social media and I'm going to do an episode where we talk about it because obviously the trolls come in there and this, that, and the third, but they did actually bring up some topics that I didn't think about. So I want to go back through because I was able to do more research on it and still... Um, I, I still stand where um, my experiment was like my proof or whatever. So just just real quick, the experiment I did was just to prove that, you know, sea levels aren't rising. I mean, clearly you can look up pictures and everybody likes to use the uh, Statue of Liberty. I think it was in the early 1900s and then they compare it to a picture of today and the sea level lo- looks very similar. You know what I mean? So Exactly the same. I just did a very uh, simple experiment with uh, I filled a glass with ice and then poured water in it and then put it outside and videotaped the ice melting. Water level didn't change at all. So everybody was like, well, what's not wor- it's, we're not worried about the icebergs that are actually in the water. We're worried about uh, ice on the land. So I was like, okay, well, that's understandable. And I didn't think about that. And I could see where that would rise sea levels. But I Googled, um, which I don't like Google that much, obviously, but... You know, it's good for some things. So I Googled uh, how much land in the world is covered by ice. And the answer it gave me was only 10%. And, um, you know, so some of that land is fully covered with ice. So you can't sit here and say that all of that would make it into the ocean. So I could see, you know, maybe some of the shoreline ice make it into the ocean. But it's not going to uh, raise the sea levels to so, where, you know, we all have to worry about it. So... <clears throat> Um, 70% of the earth is water. So 30% is land. 10% of that 30% is covered with ice. If that all melted in, you did the actual square footage of what the you know surface of the globe earth is, um, it would barely add anything to, to um, the levels. But, you know, you, that's arguing from a globe mentality. Um, if you argue from a flat earth mentality, I believe that um, if all of the ice melted in Antarctica, which is a lot more than they tell us is on Antarctica, the continent, which is tiny, 11,000 miles around. Antarctica, the shoreline of our world, that could be bigger than all of the oceans and all of the world combined. I don't believe that the, uh, the levels would rise. I believe that the water would extend outwards across the plain and uh, it would never change. I've been uh, uh, in the same town for a long time, my entire life, and uh, I'm in the water all the time and there's rock walls and the 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 water level hasn't changed an inch. Yeah, and see, I just wanted to, and I and went like I said when I did the experiment, I said, "Hey guys, this isn't necessarily flat Earth proof, but this is just another thing that you can uh, prove that they're lying about us, trying to keep us in constant fear that you know things are going on." So, but I also had mentioned about the greenhouse gases and how it could kind of relate. And, um, you know, why would they call it greenhouse? Because a greenhouse is obviously, you know, an enclosed system, right? So, yeah. I mean, that's kind of similar to what our flat earth is, correct? Well, there is some sort of enclosure. There has to be because gas fills um, the available space. You know, people say, oh, well, gravity is holding the air down. Okay, if gravity is holding the air down, so the infinite vacuum of space, which we can't even create such a vacuum here on Earth because it's too powerful and everything would just crush um can't is can't pull the air away you know the air is being held down by gravity well it what what weighs more an air molecule a molecule of oxygen or whatever or a water molecule and the answer is obviously a water molecule okay well how could clouds form and rise up if gravity is holding air down which is less dense Okay, it's it's all a lie. It's all electrostatics. Clouds are electrostatics. Everything is electrostatics. And when lightning strikes, things go flying in the air. Interesting, right? Electrostatics um, are what hold things down and make things rise, right? You know, they teach us that airplanes fly because they have a curved top of the wing. And as they go, it creates low pressure above the wing. And then the low pressure lifts the airplane up. How do airplanes fly upside down? You've seen airplanes fly upside down, right? Yes. Yeah. Why won't they go right to the ground? Because that that low pressure is now below the wing. 
and it should suck them right to the ground, but they fly upside down. What's going on there? It's all electrostatics. That's what's going on. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, just real quick, could you give some examples of some simple experiments we could do at home? Well, I, I did one called my Flat Earth Kitchen, which I'm sure you've seen. Uh, just check my yes. channel, um, my interviews channel, or, or check my channel for the Flat Earth Kitchen. D-I-T-R-H is my channel, but everything's at flatearthdave.com. Um, and I just basically ran a line level across my long counter and said, that's the path of the sun. And then I filmed it from a celestial point of view, the height of the line. And I also filmed it from the counter, a terrestrial point of view. And the celestial point of view shows the straight line. The terrestrial point of view shows it sloping down. And then I had um, obstacles on the table, which could be mountains, city skylines, could be the cloud deck, whatever you want. But the, from the celestial point of view, the sun never went below it. But from the terrestrial point of view, that that obstacle, which was well above the camera, looked like it was at eye level, at camera level, because it was in the distance. And it looked like the sun was going below it, right? And so that's how it clearly shows how the sun sets due to perspective. That's one. Absolutely. Um, another another globe, a uh, bunch of globe trolls, some, some of the paid ones, they were going off saying that with their drones, they prove the Earth is a globe because the sun set. And then they put their drone up in the air and went up really high really quick and they could see the sun again. And that's because the Earth is curved. Well, I, uh, I have a long hallway and I put a pillow down the hallway and uh, that was, represents the clouds. I put the camera on the ground on the far end of the hallway. And then I had a light on top of, um, I don't know, something about a foot tall, which was well above the pillow. And from the camera's point of view, as I dragged that light away, it set below. It looked like it dropped below the pillow just due to perspective because it got smaller in the distance and, uh, it, and, and it looked like it went down. And then I lifted the camera up and I could see it again and I could see the floor farther than I could see before. Okay. That proves, according to the Globers, that my hallway is a sphere. Okay? You know, the, the thing is that you have to watch out is the, the Globers, whether they're just believing themselves or they're paid disinformation agents, you can tell the paid di di disinformation agents because most of them have like an English accent or an Australian accent, and they speak in a very hypnotic way. And, you know, and then they also try to make you feel stupid by just making ad homs and and nonsense, but they never ever give you a real proof. And when they do, it's completely debunkable, like with the one I just explained, right? They, they they'll 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 straw man you like uh, where the sun doesn't go below the disc on the Earth, right? And I'm like, no, it never does. Well, then how come it's not light? And it's like light doesn't travel like that through a dense medium, right? And you have to understand that we live on a topographical three dimensional plane. So once you start looking at these things and actually using your God-given common sense and your brain, um, then you could see the globe is absolutely ridiculous. I call it the helio nonsensical model. And I absolutely love that helio nonsensical model. <laughs> so um, another thing real quick is um, I was uh, doing some research last night and um, you know, I like to read what, like, Wikipedia and, you know, just even Globers will say that Flat Earth believe, what Flat Earthers believe. I love uh, reading that stuff because I want to see what they're trying to feed everybody and what make uh, everybody else be uh, believe that we believe. And um, so I come across this, uh, this video that was about Behind the Curve, which I did watch on Netflix. And, um, you know, clearly you could tell that it wasn't, they were trying to make Flat Earthers look basically stupid. But they used this gyroscope or this laser that's supposed to detect a, a drift of 15 degrees. Well, in my, and they used this as, oh, that's definitely the Earth's rotating. But in my opinion, and I want uh, your opinion as well, is that the, the either the gyroscope uh, scope could be made to automatically detect that, or um, it's detecting the drift of the firmament that, uh, and the stars and stuff moving. I mean, regardless, it's still 360 degrees. Uh, 
because the circle of the earth so then uh, we could still detect you know the 15 degree motion and uh, what is 15 degrees times 24 hours uh, 360 a hundred percent it's just like if you're sitting in a car and another car starts going behind you or a train another train starts going it looks like you're you feel like you're going backwards for a second until you get your senses so you know if the stars are spinning above and you could be convinced that the ground is spinning which is ridiculous because you would feel it i mean think about this you know there's people that they go in a car you know at 50 miles an hour and they get they get car sick motion sickness you know they go in an airplane they get motion sickness okay um but we can spin at a thousand miles an hour and we could orbit at 66,000 miles an hour and we could chase the sun in another circle at a half a million miles an hour and we're speeding up and we're slowing down all these crazy speeds. Um, no one gets sick from that, but just add 50 miles an hour to that and then you throw up. Okay. It's <laughs> nonsensical. Absolutely. And actually, I heard a guy, he's just a normal everyday guy on a podcast. It's actually a newer podcast called uh, Firmamental. And um, I know that you were on George Hobbs' Flat Earth Files podcast, and that's where this guy come from, but his name is Raul, and he decided to start his own podcast, and he had this guy named Alex on, and the way he compared it is they say that we can't feel all these motions because it's all constant velocity, but the way he compared it was to uh, driving on an off-ramp, but just imagine you're, it never ends, you know what I mean? He says, you can still be going whatever speed you're going, but you're, everything in your car is going to be shifting, you know, a direction you know you're gonna feel it con you're gonna they, feel it even though you're moving at a constant speed so they like to talk about um you know a constant speed but when you take a turn of any and off that trajectory uh, you know you you go off of that tan tangential tra trajectory i can't speak tangential that's okay. trajectory that's a hard one um that's yes, the tongue is. twister um that's called that's acceleration and they're like, well, you know, you look at a clock. You, you, can you see a clock moving? That's a, and, they, and the hour hand on a clock, and, and, and the Earth is spinning half of that speed. No, that's angular speed. But, but um, tangential, tangential speed, uh, linear speed, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, that, that is what you have to measure. So you're on a merry-go-round, and it goes around once, you know, you know kitty ride at a fair. And it goes around once per day. You won't barely even notice you're moving unless you're very perceptive, perceptive and very patient. Okay. Now expand that out to 24 miles uh, in circumference. So now it's going a mile an hour. So a very slow walk. Okay. And then, you know, it's going to go 24 miles in 24 hours. Okay. So now expand it out to a thousand miles. Okay. A thousand miles around. You got to go a thousand miles in 24 hours. So whatever that divides out to, that's how many miles per hour you're going. Now expand it out to 24,000 miles. The speed of the, you know, you're going a thousand miles an hour. Airplanes don't even go a thousand miles an hour. Okay. That's twice the speed of a commercial jet. Right. And you're turning at a rate of like a mile a minute. Okay. You're, you're going off your tangential tangent gentle or tangent speed of a mile a minute a mile a minute okay it depends on how you calculate it it could be even it, you can calculate it in a different way and it's even more it's absolutely ridiculous to believe that you can uh, that there's no difference in that you know they have adult um carousel rides and they're not even that big you know maybe you know, 100 feet or 100 feet across or something and you're not allowed to be on the outside horse unless you're a big, strong person. The outside horse is going to throw you off because it goes pretty fast, you know, and, and compared to the inside one. So you should be able to feel the difference in the tangential speed in, uh, in like you're in uh, Ecuador versus Alaska because you're going so much faster. But nope, the 50 miles in the car, that's going to make you car sick. But all of these motions of the earth, none of that matters. You can't feel it. Because, you know, the world is conspiring to make you believe that you live on a globe. So stupid. It's, it's very, very stupid. And it's 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 terrible world that we live in. And, you know, I hate to say, but you have to give the controllers or the devil or whoever, you know, making this possible. You have to give them credit because they've done a good job. You know, they've got... Done a great job. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, it, it's hard. So, so um, you know... What can us as flat earther do to help wake people up? Like what, 
success have you had uh, with what, you know, whatever well, uh, your proofs are? Yeah, no. So the, the proofs are already out there. there. There's actually nothing left for them. The only proofs that they have are all fallacious. They're all fallacies. They're all nonsense. And, and you know, if someone just goes, well, you know, boats go over the horizon and you're an idiot. And someone goes, oh, man, I don't want to be an idiot. I guess boats go over the horizon. But you don't understand what you're seeing. And and there's plenty of videos. And, and again, my app, the Frequently Asked Questions, you can take down every single global argument with that section of the app alone. So what can we do, right? And the answer is we now have the power um, to wake up the whole world. And if everybody that has the app would just share information with other people, show them, gift them the app, okay? Just pass it around. If 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 five percent of the people that had the app gift gifted it or got someone to get it once a week in uh, in a year's time, the entire world would know. Okay, it's absolutely insane the power that we have right now. And the other thing is, you know, um, there is big people. Some of the largest people in the media out there are now questioning flat Earth, um, but they're they don't know they're they're foo fooing it because they don't they can't find any information. They don't know about the app. They don't know about me. So what I'm asking people to do is throw my name, throw flatearthdave.com at them. And say, you need to talk to this person, you know, and just whatever you want to say, just throw it at them. Because Tucker Carlson, just the other day, brought up Flat Earth and he goes, listen, I'm not saying Flat Earth, I'm not denying it. He goes, I just haven't seen it yet. So if anybody has information that can sh show me the Earth is flat, I will amplify it. Okay. Now, that's the game changer right there. We need to get, you know, Jaron from Jaronism and myself want to go on Tucker Carlson with him and educate him. And if he, if that happens and he amplifies it, that will break the internet. Man, that's going to be really awesome. I actually uh, am hoping and praying that you guys are able to make that happen. Prayers and tweets and messages and go on his website and tweet at him and just tweet, you know, uh, flat earth, Dave.com uh, have these guys on and uh, it'll change the world. This is the one. It only takes one person like that, and then it then it's over. Then it's over. And at that point, you know, the controllers, if they really have control of the world, they'll either fold up and die, or they'll flip the card over, and the Great Reset will be here, and it'll be my fault. <laughs> <laughs> well, that will be fine because... I mean, I think it's inevitable. It's going to happen one day. It's just a matter of when. So everybody listening, guys, I challenge you. Let's help David. Let's get him, uh, you know, go on your social media platforms, tag uh, Tucker Carlson uh, and uh, put David's Absolutely. name in there. Put, put Flat Earth Dave. There. Just say FlatEarthDave.com. That's where you can. There's a book Absolutely. Flat Earth Dave link there. My contact there. Everything's there. And he could also start researching there if he wants to just look himself. Um, cause that's where the information is flat earth, Dave.com. You know, I've been on so, Peters. I've been on with Alex Jones. I've been on with George Norrie on coast to coast. I've been on with, uh, um, Chris Jericho who, you know, um, uh, Peggy Hall, right. Um, and these are all bigger names. You know, there's a lot of people also, a lot of celebrities that know the earth is flat, but they're keeping quiet. We're not allowed to say their names. Okay. But, they're out there, big celebrities, maybe one that used to be on a show about a bar and then had his own show afterwards. Maybe even that person's a flat earther, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay? Yeah, and I think, you know, there's a big reason why these people can't talk about it, these celebrities. And Well, they don't um, want to lose that. their income. They, you know, Kyrie Irving came out and said the earth is flat, and then his sponsor's like, oh, goodbye, you know, $50 million this year and $100 million next year. And uh, he's like, oh, I'll just back down from that, you know? And uh, their controllers, you know, when you have that amount of money flowing in and the threat of it going away, it's pretty scary. People love having, you know, those comforts. So, Absolutely. Yep. And I also think it goes back to, like, contracts. And this is something that uh, Sean and I talked about on our uh, episode was, you know, you know, these, these uh, celebrities, obviously, they're either selling their soul to the devil or signing these contracts with the controllers or whoever. And, um, you know, if they go against whatever's in that contract, you know, they can be booted off or off 
in general, you know what I mean? Or And this is where uh, I think these clones are coming from because <laughs> the original people, um, you know, go against what their contract was and then they have to they clone them. So obviously they want these influencers in the media still. So this is why they clone them. Right. So that you still see that person, although the original person was uh, opening up and getting tired of of the deception and the lies and was trying to let people know. But of course the uh, controllers that be don't want that. A lot of people, you know, when they learn about this, they throw their hands up. They go, what difference does it make? I still have to go to work on Monday. There's nothing I can do. I'm just one person. And that's where they don't understand. You can do everything. Well, the government's going to come after me. They're going to put me in jail. They're going to force me this, force me that. They can't. That's not how this world works. It's everything is done over offers and contracts. It's all a, there's a system that they have to obey, okay? And if you're unaware of it, then you're just going to – that's your own fault. That's your own problem. So on the on the app, by the way, um, if you go to the, to the messaging section and then you go to the groups, there's a group uh, that just started called Operating in Commerce, okay? Operating – is it commerce or contracts? Operating in Commerce. Um, join that group. Say hello. And uh, they he'll give you they'll give you lessons there. There's a guy that, that started the group, Nick. Um, he uh, teaches people from a very basic level up to as high as you want to go about um, how to operate in this world. There's no one has ever forced you to do anything. They've offered you stuff, and you thought it was a demand, and you may have done it, okay. But there's no such thing as a demand. Uh, they can offer you something, and then you can't ignore it. You have to counter offer like, Hey, we'd like you to stick this thing in your arm. Okay. Because we say that you should, and you can say, okay, I would gladly do that. If you can show me X, Y, and Z that this has been tested, this has been proven that this is that you can make it ridiculous. And there's no way that they'll, that they could ever accept it. And it's the same for everything from the amount of money you pay, the robbers that steal your money. It's from everything. Once you understand how um, how this works, um, then uh, you can win easily. So it's called operating in commerce. Okay, well, I'll definitely have to check that out. And just for um, me, do you have to be um, subscribed to the yearly subscription in order to access this group? Yeah, the, the, all of the groups, um, you have to be a subscriber. Not sure how you were able to message, <laughs> send messages out without being a subscriber. Are you sure you're not subscribed? I mean, maybe I am, but I mean, I don't think that I am. But yeah. I mean, I'll have to go back and double check because yeah. I don't ever remember doing it. And you I might, really I mean, it literally, be, it's not, it's not like a huge thing. Like if you, if you like, if you click on something that's locked and you say, and it says you have to be subscribed and you hit subscribe and you say, okay. It's done. It's eleven dollars. You're not gonna ever remember it. So it's possible you are subscribed. <laughs> but after we're done, I wanna I wanna get your username from you and just and just double check to make sure everything's working okay. Okay. Yeah, because I was confused about that too. I was like, wait, I thought I wasn't able to message people because I've tried it before. I was like, oh, well, let me go message this yeah. person here and just talk. You know. You might have you might have subscribed. So and again, it's eleven dollars a year. Stop complaining, people. And I made it so you can get it for free just by spreading the word of flat earth. Okay. You know, in the friend finder on the upper left, there's a button that'll open up the referrals page. You get this random number, use the edit pencil, change it to something mine is D I T R H deep inside the rabbit hole. Or you can change Change yours to, you know, Robert, you know, or, or just something. You have you can put it up to seven characters and then tell people about the app, show people the app. And whenever you show someone the app, you have a flat earth discussion and you say, well, look at this, look at this, look at this. Just show them some of the pictures. They're like, where do I get that app? You go get it here, but use my referral code when it asks you for a referral code. Boom, there's a point. There's another point. There's another point. 11 points. And then you can get the whole year. Okay. That's very interesting. And I might... um. Maybe I'll um, create an ad on my um, <clears throat> on my podcast for it and it, have a referral code. Maybe that'll help. Yeah, and it, it's it's kind of fun too. Like even if you wake up eleven people, you're like, that's awesome. You know, that's awesome, and you're helping. Imagine if everyone on the app woke up eleven people this year. It's game over. It's over. It's over. Right now, we we just hit a hundred eight thousand people on the friend finder alone. Okay, there's there's way more than that app users. 
and it's going up faster and faster every day. But if everybody started actively sharing the app, and again, people are like, oh, that's why this guy's talking flat earth. It's all about the money. If you knew how much money I walked away from to talk about flat earth with no idea how I would even be able to support myself, okay, uh, you wouldn't be saying that. But it's not about that. This, this is this app is the 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 key that is going to help wake up the world. And uh, I'm blessed to uh, have created it with help from above. And I have to say that uh, everybody who has the app is blessed as well because it it can connect you with people. And, um, you know, I can relate to you a little bit in understanding you walking away from a, a very, you know, successful business to come and do this. And that is because I recently quit my job so that I could pursue ways to, you know, uh, work on Flat Earth full time. And um, so right now I am in between jobs and I'm trying to explore other ways of income, which is, you know, it's got its challenges and it's hard. But I believe and I'm so passionate about the Flat Earth that, you know, maybe I'll get lucky and um, be able to do things similar like you have. It's, you know, it's the, if you follow your passion, the money will come. Absolutely. And I believe that we can create our reality. Um, That's what they don't want you to know. Right. They they don't want you to know. They don't want you to know that your thoughts create your reality. And once you really connect with this place that we live, um, magic happens. Absolutely. So we got about 10 minutes left and just real quick. Just for everybody out there, can you explain how the model you believe works? Okay, because I know that some flat earthers believe there's a dome, some don't. I know Sean Hibbler thinks that it's just a a flat plane impenetrable above us, you know. But um, I'm just uh, curious in the listeners for the model that you believe and how it works. That's a big question. So the the answer is, you know, anything above where we can reach or beyond where we're allowed to go south um, is speculation, but we can speculate all day. And uh, I do like doing that. Um, I'm with uh, uh, the idea that there is a, uh, a firmament sky, which extends far beyond Antarctica. And um, I'm not sure if it connects down in Antarctica and then bubbles out again, or it just keeps on going. I, I don't know the answer to that, but I think it goes you know, extended. I don't want to say infinite because that's, you know, I don't know what infinite even means. So I think that's where we live. But again, we want the right to go explore. You know, one thing we all know, some people believe, uh, you know, a dome. People say, well, the Bible says it's just the earth. Well, maybe the earth is contains 173 worlds and that we're just limited because they've captured us in this one and limited us and said, hey, we're going to keep you prisoners in this small little pond that we call earth when in reality earth goes on much farther i don't know is the answer okay but we all know that it's scientifically provable that we're not a spinning ball through a space vacuum i mean air you know a gas fills the available space but for some reason after a big bang which nothing turned into everything all the gases decided to fall in upon each other and get more and more dense and suck more gases in and leave a void in between these burning balls of gas in a scientifically impossible void okay that's ridiculous think about this when you compress gas it becomes liquid okay so you compress gas let's say you got a tank of propane remove the tank what happens to the gas does it start sucking in more gas or does it expand to fill the available space it expands it expands rapidly and violently okay uh to fill available space (laughs) yeah It, it so you know the idea that gas in space collapses upon itself and turns into a a fusion furnace nuclear furnace whatever you want to call it it's that's fairy tales it's just so stupid I agree a hundred percent. And you know, there's something that I have, it's a dream, you know, but a man can dream. Right. And it is, you know, why can't we make a Hollywood style flat earth movie? Now, obviously we do the documentaries and that's cool, but why can't, I think that we could, you know, even if people don't believe it, it would be interesting and still maybe make people think definitely a way to, um, 
help people wake up, but just learn, uh, you know. Well, well hold on a Hollywood second. Style movie. Yeah, Sean Hibbler has made what I call Hollywood style movies. They're amazing. They're, they're his movies level level with me and the next level um, are fantastic. And if you haven't seen, you know, I'm sure you have, but if anyone's listening and hasn't Absolutely. seen them, you got to see all three of them and watch them in reverse order. Level with me, then the next level, and then level. Um, and and that's all the information you need. And then there's another movie that's actually premiering on July 31st in Brevard County, North Carolina, called um, Untold Origins. I happen to be in it. Um, and a whole bunch of people, Mark Sarge is in it, and a bunch of other people. And it's done by um, people that make, you know, real movies. And it'll be premiering uh, in this movie theater. There's a red carpet event. Um, there's going to be a party. Uh, I'm going to be there. So, um Anybody that's in that area, you should come. You can find information, guess where, on my website, flatearthdave.com. There's a banner right near the top of the page. What's that? When is this supposed to be premiering? It's Where are you located? Are you near there? Um, I'm in Georgia, so uh, uh, not far it, from Atlanta, so it's It's July it's 31st. It for me. It, it's July 31st. In Brevard oh, wow. County, North Carolina. But just go to flatearthdave.com, click the banner, look up all the information. You can get your tickets. It's almost sold out, I think. They might be putting a second show. I'm not sure. But there's a little party beforehand, like an after party. I'm literally coming in for 24 hours. I'm there, and then I'm out. So um, on the app, um, in the in the group section, there's a, a group called Origins Untold Premiere. Um origins untold movie and anybody that's coming join that group because we're not sure where we're going to be before the movie and stuff. And we'll be messaging everybody in that group right now. There's only two people in that group because I just started, just made it. Um, so it's called origins untold. And uh, you know, that's how we'll coordinate like, Hey, you know what? We're going to grab some breakfast or lunch, whatever over at so-and-so place everybody come on over and then that way we can reach everybody rather than like, Oh, I wish I knew I was just around the corner. So that's how we're going to use the app for that. Okay. Awesome. And you said, what was the name of that group? Cause if I'm subscribed, I'm about to go join that. It's called origins untold movie. Just go to the group section and in the search, just type in origins. It'll come right up. Okay. Perfect. I just wanted to write that down and um, that way I can remember it. All right, good, because um, I wanted it, – it's funny because when I first got into Flat Earth, the there was a um, Flattoberfest in Raleigh, North Carolina, and it, that's not very far from me, and I missed it, and I was so upset about it. And this year, it's in Las Vegas. Now, listen, I've never – I've been basically poor, broke my whole life, and I've never even flown on a plane, Dave, uh, as surprising as that may seem. So – and I've never been out of the Southeast either. So, I mean, I would love to go to Las Vegas. I'm hoping that maybe, you know, uh, God will bless me with a way that I can be there. But, um, you know, this this right here seems a little bit more within there the are, There are people so, that are driving. There's a, there's a group on uh, the app called Driving to Flattoberfest. And you could kind of wow. find there. Or if you go to flattoberfest.com. I think there's another group over there and you can try to find people that want to split the ride. Someone's driving, they want a passenger. Um, you can check that. That's a long drive though, but uh, Plattoberfest is uh, October 21st, 20th to 21st in Las Vegas. It's going to be a blast. Okay. I just wanted to write that down. There you go. All right. Well, that's awesome. So, um, so the premiere is right around the corner, so that's awesome. Um, maybe I'll see you there, Dave. You should come. It's, that's easy. I don't know how far of a drive it is, but if it's you know a few hours, that's that's not bad. Let's see. So, all right. So I'm on your site right now, looking at it, and it's saying <laughs> Coed Cinema. Coed right? Cinema in Brevard County, North Carolina. I'm about to Google this real quick. <laughs> there you go. So, anybody listening, spread the word however you want. Send videos. Send, you know, when you send a video, a good trick to do is like find your 10 
favorite videos and put them in a playlist and then always send the link from that playlist to the video. That way, if they watch it, the next video will come up, okay, in the playlist. If you take the URL from the top of the screen rather than the share the individual video button, um, then you're you're lining them up to watch what you want them to watch. And the app works the same way. If you go to the Frequently Asked Questions section and you open up a playlist, you can send them the whole playlist. They're like, what about, you know, flights, Southern flights? And uh, just send them the whole playlist. And uh, then then they're sucked in because you if you watch a good Flat Earth video, the next thing that Google is going to feed you is an anti-Flat Earth video. Exactly. And, yeah, exactly. so you got to watch it that way. All right, well, I'm going to tell you, Dave, it's about three and a half hours from me to the cinema. So the long I'm drive. Try. <laughs> it, I've driven further, though. I've driven further. Um, I used to live in Savannah, and I would come home uh, every now and again, and it was about a three and a half hour drive. So I used to make that drive all the time, so that won't be too bad. And um, like I said, maybe God will bless me, and I'll, I, I would love to meet you guys because, you know, a lot of people – you don't know me, but I know you very well, Dave. I've listened to you for years. Nope. Uh, you're like a friend in my book, so it cool. would be an honor to meet you. I, I, uh, Jelly Lewis is going to be there, and the Flat Earth Brothers are going to be there, and uh, and some other people too. It's going to be a blast. Okay, yeah, I seen the uh, trailer for it on YouTube. Uh, yep. Mark Sargent, will he be there also? Mark is not going to make it. It's too far for Mark. He's got to take like four different planes to get there, and he's like, I'm out. Oh goodness! <laughs> well, that's okay. But I would love to meet you, Dave. So, um, all right, look out for me. <laughs> Very good, man. Thanks, and um, thanks for having me on. And everybody, you know, when you say research flat Earth, don't tell them to Google flat Earth because they're just going to get tired. Send them to my website, flatearthdave.com. Okay. All right, guys. So I will definitely have all of Dave's information down in the show description. Um, for Dave, I appreciate it. This has been a very wonderful conversation. I sure hope everybody else has enjoyed it. And until next time, we will see you, my friends.